Okay, so we want to talk today about do's and don'ts in canning. Um, we want to talk about the fact that your canning book is going to tell you to absolutely never use anything that's less than stellar quality, that's not 100% picked off the tree fresh that day. Okay, so that's not realistic for the homesteader. You're going to find that uh, you're going to get fruit and vegetables in that are, you know, less than stellar. Um, and if you want to uh, have a sustainable homestead, you're going to have to take advantage of what opportunities are given you, uh, even if those opportunities aren't the best produce you ever saw in your life. Uh, they tell you not to even eat, fr eat or process fruit that's been dropped on the ground off of your own apple tree. Um, to pick the apples or don't process them. So that's not, that's in a perfect world. Um, that apple falling on the ground incurring one bruise and a little bit of dirt at your homestead uh, is a whole different thing than the hundreds and millions of people that have handled your apple if you buy it from the store. So to me the risk is actually less in going ahead and using your own drop fruit than to go ahead and use commercial apples. I use both. So, I mean, that's totally up to you. Um, as far as vegetables are concerned, um, if it's compromised, then don't use it. Because vegetables are low acid and high probability for botulism and fun things like that. So you want to stay away from uh, compromised vegetables. A little bit of wilt might be one thing. Um, but don't, any kind of mold, any kind of rot, anything like that, just pass on the vegetables. Because you, you do want the vegetables to be in pretty good shape. Okay, so bear, what I have today is berries to show you guys. And we want to talk a little bit about mold. So these guys are less than stellar. Somebody I know gave these to me. And it, sometimes it'll present as a white mold. That's obvious. Now mold, you could try to cut this away. But in my experience, what you're going to end up happening, because mold forms tendrils down deep into the soft tissues of fruit, that you can't even actually see is you can cut this mold away and it still tastes like mold um, on the other side of the fruit. So sometimes it'll present on strawberries as a moldy spot, green or white. Sometimes it'll just present as a brown spot. So the brown spots sometimes I'll try to cut away and but you see how this is kind of mushy and still brown? This is after I tried to cut it away. So sometimes you'll find that the, the fruit was compromised worse than you thought it was. And then you have your um, raspberries that I was given. Now sometimes you'll have it on the outside, the mold, but the first thing that happens usually to raspberries is look down deep on the inside and that's where you're going to find your green or white mold first. Anything that's touching mold um, will also taste moldy. Don't try to pick it off on berries, it's just not going to fly. So this was a mistake I made. This was uh, nectarines, okay? And they had been refrigerated too long and were pithy. So I wasted my time canning them. And this, in that particular instance, with pithy fruit, um, taste it. If it doesn't taste good, don't can it. Because it really, it was spongy and it just turned out, look how nasty it looks. That's after less than a year. So you do want to be aware that sometimes... Um, issues with quality can be serious when you're homesteading and canning um, and sometimes they're not so you need to be able to discern for yourself what times are what like I say low acid foods like vegetables uh, including tomatoes because sometimes you'll get a like a moldy spot or a bad spot on a tomato just don't take the chance because I've cut them up and it still tastes like mold um, down in the seeds so uh, tomatoes are supposed to be higher acid, but with the modern varieties, a lot of them are not. So it's just not worth the risk on vegetables. Um, but yeah, be careful how you're canning, but don't be so stringent about the quality and the super freshness that you overlook the, the less expensive or the drop fruit. Because it can be a saver for your homestead and, and uh, far easier to can with. Uh, as far as expense goes. That's just my advice.